Okay, Tanya, aka Cougar. <laughs> I got a question. Cougar. Okay, Yay. so how'd we come up with that name? How's that? Okay, um, <laughs> honestly, everybody thinks this is because I date younger men, which is oh. kind of true. Oh. But um, actually, it was I had just uh, moved back from Tennessee. Uh, where I was bedridden uh, from stiff person syndrome, and um, my dad took me hunting up Cougar Ridge, um, which is not far from here, and uh, it's like a an incline like this, and straight up and down, and um, it took us five and a half hours to climb that ridge and to get to where we wanted to elk hunt, and um, when we stood on our butts all the way down the hill. Um, my dad said, you did it, honey. And uh, I actually dubbed myself Cougar. Okay, cool. Right on. Yeah. So you got a big hunt coming up pretty soon. Oh my gosh. I'm so freaking stoked. I'm so stoked for you. Cool. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay, the big hunt, Elk, Elk Camp 2017. Wow. Okay. I want to know, personal, one-to-one, -one, who's Tanya? I mean, who's Cougar? Sorry. That's okay. What does Cougar get out of this Elk Camp? Number one, I get to go. It's a huge thing to be invited to an elk camp. Uh, not just for one year, but the second year. So this is huge. Um, you get to go after the game. The, the big game is there. And it's a thrill that you would never anticipate in your life. But this year is different. This year, it pulls on my heartstrings even more um, because we get to hunt with veterans, um, disabled vets, um, injured or wounded warriors, if you might say, and um, just that that harvest to see them harvest the thing would be amazing. To help them harvest, uh, to be able to be part of their their thrill that they don't get to do is. It's priceless. Well, and you've got a real heart for veterans, you know. You make blankets for them. Um, you I do know. a lot of stuff in your spare time, you know, to uplift the community of uh, the people that have served our nation. So hats off to you with that. Thank you. Okay, so that's not the only part of uh, Elk Camp 2017. It sounds like it's going to be pretty exciting. Yep. Um, yeah, uh, you've been pretty excited about this for a while now. <laughs> Yep. Okay, come on girl, what excites you? It always excites me, the thrill of the hunt. Um, number one, you don't know if you're gonna get your kill or not, but when you do, and if you do, which I did get a kill last year, um, you get to harvest that animal, and you get to be spiritual, one with the animal. Um, you just, you just, handed yourself and your family food and that's the way I was raised yeah. we don't shoot for sport we have ethics and morals we hunt for food when you actually get a, uh, a I'm gonna call it a critter in your sight and you can lay it out and harvest that animal for food there's none of it like it it's a feeling of accomplishment. It's a feeling of joy. It's a feeling of sorrow. It's um, mixed emotions. But in the end, you close your eyes and you thank God that you have food. And uh, for instance, uh, last year during elk camp, um, we had serious laughs and a lot of fun, but the learning experience was amazing. And we had enough food to help several families. So this is awesome. And this year, you know, I'm not a professional when it comes to anything, but this year I feel that I can look forward to teaching others uh, my skills that I've learned, and I also look forward to learning from others um, to make me a better hunter. The veterans, they can do that. They've seen it. They've been there. They know it. And um, I really can't wait to experience a hunt with um, with veterans and with 
um, of course my other hunting buddies and uh, some of the crew that was there last year will be there and I'm looking forward to uh, seeing their their skills improve as well. So last night last year was a success oh, and yes. you had a great time. This year is completely different. You are you're bringing disabled vets with you. Um, there's a whole new crew coming. Yes. You know, I'm sure there's challenges involved with that. But when it comes right down to cougar, there this is about cougar and black sheep. But when it comes right down to cougar, cougar's heart, cougar's soul. What's there? Tell us what's right there. We talked about the hunt. We talked about the kill. We talked about feeding families. What makes Cougar tick in all of this? Wow, let's go deep, shall we? Um, yes, we shall. Is the uh, desire and the urge and the power and the strength to keep going. It is everything that I want to share and inspire others to do, whether it's hunting or something else. If you are as, um, I don't want to say sick because I'm not feeling sick. I, I want to say if you're as, uh, in pain and you think your life is in shambles, um, but what is in my heart and soul is this gives me an outlet to be human. This gives me an outlet to be one with God, to be one with nature. It gives me an outlet to let go of the pain and it gives me a challenge. And with that challenge comes an inspiration to hopefully reach others to get out of bed do what you want to do, whether it be hunting, fishing, camping, kayaking, whatever it is that you think your body can't do, I'm here to tell you, you can't do it. And that's in my soul. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so we talked one time a while back, and you had mentioned the words, it's like a meditation. So when you're out there, and when you're, when you're sat in your perch, and when you're tuning into everything, what are some of the steps you go through to ground yourself and get ready for the sacred gift of life that's gonna sustain your family for the winter? <clears throat> um, number one is always prayer. Um, I always pray before a hunt and after a hunt whether I get a kill or not. Meditation, somebody taught me, and I like to close my eyes and Listen, uh, one of my gifts for hunting as a hunter is I have a very good hearing. So I close my eyes and I just listen um, to the birds, maybe to um, the squirrels or whatever is out there. And I listen to the higher power, obviously, too. Um, I try to uh, vision the kill. Um, you want it to be clean. You don't want to injure an animal and have to hunt it all over the place in hopes that it doesn't die alone somewhere. And then if you do actually, and this has happened to me, um, injure an animal and you track it and you find it, um, I, I, I bless that animal. I bless the food that it could possibly give me. Um, I thank the Lord that he put those critters on this earth to feed me and my family and many other people across the world. Um, I also um, have come across critters that I couldn't harvest because they were full of parasites. And I broke down in tears. And I've had to listen to my dad and his wise words of, he would have died anyway, you did the right thing. And even though it didn't feel right, it was and uh, you move on and you wait for the next hunt. So what I'm hearing is a real compassionate soul that um, is in communion with nature while you're hunting and um, in communion with um, the food that feeds your family. Amen. And That's a beautiful friends. thing. <laughs> so that just leads me to another question. 
hunting is a privilege that we have in America here. Hunting is a way for people to sustain their family and their welfare. But hunting is so much more than that. Yes. Tanya, I want to hear from you because you are female. Because you have grown up knowing this. Because you do have a passion for this as a soul here on the planet with all the controversy going around about people doing this game hunting and that game hunting and stuff like that. When you hunt, what do you hunt for? I hunt for food. Um, I was raised this way by my father and I don't believe in poaching. Um, people often give this excuse of, <clears throat> I had to poach, my family was starving. There's a part of me that feels that, but there's also resources to help you um, do that. So I am anti-poaching. That was my dryer, sorry. Um, I'm anti-poaching. <clears throat> I am, um, <clears throat> I just got lost for words because when it comes to hunting, it's, it's so primal, it's so, um, there's so much more to a hunt than anybody could possibly think of. If they're a real hunter, they don't just go out with, okay, I'm gonna go, bang, bang, you're dead, you're mine, you're in my freezer. No, it's a relaxation process. Yes, it keeps me strong and helps me be young. It uh, gives me something to get up for and live for. And then it helps me live if, if I harvest an animal. There is so many aspects to this question that is almost mind-boggling. So I'm just going to leave it at this. Um, have morals. Have ethics. Do the right thing. Whenever you get a kill and you can harvest your food, don't be stingy. Share it. I think that's a beautiful place to end. Until next time, thank you so much, Tanya. Beautiful heart.